In order to remain the most powerful country in the world, you have to exhibit strength in every environment, including the ocean. The main U.S. naval force are aircraft carriers. However, by the turn of the 21st century, they were becoming morally obsolete, and replacing them with the future generation aircraft carriers was the obvious next step. That's why in 1996, a decision was made to start a project to create a third generation aircraft carrier called CVN-21, or the 21st Century Aircraft Carrier, presently known as the Gerald R. Ford. Going off the name itself, the U.S. Navy Command quickly determined what they were trying to get in return. A fundamentally new ship with a displacement no less than 100,000 tons. Inconspicuous, with a long deck capable of servicing all existing Nimitz-class aircrafts and any promising prototypes. Their second important requirement was to reduce maintenance costs by at least 20%. The designers sat at their computer desks and quickly drafted several variations of revolutionary prototypes. They looked fantastical, a true weapon of the third millennium, like Star Wars except in the ocean. But when the admirals saw the price tag for these science fiction projects, they realized that building 10 of these aircraft carriers would leave them without gilded epaulets on their ceremonial uniforms. They retracted the requirement for stealth and prioritized the reduction of operation costs. Let's see how well the designers fulfilled the task. Firstly, they decided to keep the hole from the good old Nimitz, only slightly modifying it in favor of stealth. Therefore, the ship's dimensions are almost the same as its predecessors. It's 1,105 feet long, 250 feet in height, and 255 feet wide at the widest part of the ship definitely enough to frighten half the population. The command room was moved closer to the stern and the captain's bridge was relocated to the lower deck to reduce the size of the superstructure. The cabins and some of the other rooms were tucked into the hole and the superstructure itself was moved more aft. The mast is made of composite materials that absorb radar impulses. Of course, you can hardly make a 1105 foot vessel invisible but on cruise missile radars, it now looked indistinguishable from the rest of the escort ships. How do they know what target to hit? It's not like you can put a kamikaze on a missile. Secondly, the aircraft carrier was equipped with two new nuclear reactors, A-1B, capable of producing 25% more electricity than their counterparts on older generation vessels. The reactors are designed to be in operation for 50 years without the need for extra fuel. These two reactors can accelerate the 100,000-ton giant to 30 knots, or 35 miles per hour. In World War II, that was the speed of torpedo boats, and only in battle mode. Thirdly, all processes on the ship were automated to the highest degree. It allowed the crew to be reduced by a third. The standard configuration of an aircraft carrier includes 2,500 to 2,700 crew members, about 2,500 flight deck crew, and 70 commanding officers, a total of 5,070 to 5,270 people. Gerald R. Ford, on the other hand, will host only 4,660 people on board. So the 20% target of reducing operation costs has been accomplished, considering that over half a century of service, an aircraft carrier uses $20 billion, the savings will amount to as much as $4 billion. And for 10 of these aircraft carriers, the savings amount to $40 billion. Divide $40 billion by 50 years, that's $800 million a year, or a 0.11% reduction. Not very impressive as far as savings go. Doesn't exactly make you want to pat the military on the back for taking care of taxpayers' money. In fact, it's doubtful there'll be any savings at all. Spoiler alert, there won't be, but we'll get to that. But first, where did we end up in terms of its impact? At the end of the day, an aircraft carrier is a military vessel, and the key thing is efficiency. Thanks to its extended deck, this aircraft carrier can carry up to 90 aircraft, including F-35C combat aircrafts, F-A-18EF Super Hornet fighters, E-2D Advanced Hawkeye AWACS planes, and MH-60RS multi-mission helicopters. That's not including unmanned fighter jets. Considering that there are less than 100 F-35 units in the whole of Europe, except for the American aircraft station there, one Gerald R. Ford can conquer the whole of the old continent. 
And so, apart from Russia and China, even a single aircraft carrier like that will be a decisive argument for diplomatic relations with the U.S. for any country. Even more impressive, the aircraft launch rate, which is the number of takeoffs per unit of time. It's 15% higher on the new aircraft carrier than on the Nimitz. All the while, Gerald R. Ford has one less aircraft launching space. It only has three. The higher launch rate is achieved thanks to its electromagnetic catapults, which can be reloaded much faster than the conventional steam catapults. The aircraft carrier was also equipped with a new arresting gear system. As a result, the aircraft carrier can facilitate up to 160 sorties a day. If things get really hairy, that number can increase up to 220. Besides, the launch and landing systems ended up being twice as light as these steam-operated systems. Considering the fact that catapults make up 20% of the total mass of the aircraft carrier, it's a significant achievement. There is but one drawback in all this glory. In the tests performed between May 2017 and January 2019, 20 failures of electromagnetic catapults were registered over the course of 740 launches. These failures did not lead to aircraft damages nor injuries among the crew members, but they did put the estimated number of daily sorties into question. Two of the failures led to the operation disruption and short-term cessation of flights. The specialists later learned that an electromagnetic catapult could only facilitate 400 takeoffs instead of 4,166, at which point it would malfunction. The advanced arresting gear system could only facilitate 25 landings in the row, as opposed to the projected 1,600. The automation system was malfunctioning too. As of December 2018, 11 new electromagnetic elevators designed to move the ordnance from storage and assembly to the flight deck were not operational. Two of them were fixed, while the rest were finalized after the ship was commissioned. The main issue stemmed from software. As a result, well, you already guessed it. Considering one of the main goals was to save money, we had the opposite result. Gerald R. Ford became the most expensive vessel in the history of shipbuilding at $12.8 billion, plus the $4.7 billion for designing the project. Although to be objective, the latter can be divided by 10 to account for the number of future aircraft carriers based on this design. Either way, the price tag is over $13 billion. If you divide that by the ship's weight in pounds, you get $58 per pound. Now that's a very expensive shark. But let's get back to the armament. The ship has a self-defense system designed for anti-air defense, which is mainly represented by ESM, Evolved Sea Sparrow Missiles. There are two eight-container launchers, each capable of launching 32 missiles. The equipment is aimed at countering fast and maneuverable anti-ship missiles. There are also anti-aircraft RAM, rolling airframe missile launchers, to engage targets at close range. Although, of course, its main source of protection are the escort ships. The ship's anti-air defense is complemented by the dual-band radar system, DBR. We won't bore you with the technical characteristics. Just note that this system is also installed on another U.S. Navy wonder, the new generation missile destroyer DDG-1000 Zumwalt. Construction of the aircraft commenced on August 11, 2005, when Northrop Grumman performed a ceremonial cut of a 15-ton metal sheet which consequently became part of the ship's hull. The next aircraft carrier of this class will be named the John F. Kennedy and is scheduled to be commissioned in 2024. The tenth and last ship is scheduled for the faraway 2058. So, how will the U.S. naval forces utilize this modern and impressive force? From the moment it's been commissioned, Gerald Ford has not taken part in any action. The ship continues testing its systems and fixing issues, there's no available information about joint exercises. Not long ago, in June 2021, some images appeared on the net where the aircraft carrier is being tested with a powerful underwater explosion in the immediate vicinity of the ship. That was the full ship shock trial, a large-scale test of all the aircraft carrier systems, from onboard computers to the nuclear reactor after a large impact. Before the trial, special testing equipment was installed on the ship as well as testing its resilience, this event was also testing the crew's ability to eliminate potential damages. The first underwater detonation was performed on June 18th off the coast of Florida. The resulting shock was measured as a 3.9 magnitude earthquake. Altogether, there are supposed to be three explosions. 
Note that so far, there's no information about the results of the first full ship shock trial. In short, for now, the most expensive and ideally combat-efficient U.S. aircraft carrier continues navigating the sea, working out the kinks of its automated system and eliminating factory issues. The ship doesn't have a flight deck crew nor any armament yet. There's no available information about the upcoming exercises. And here's the last fly in the 100,000 tons of Gerald R. Ford ointment. Its predecessor, the Nimitz, cost America half the price. At the same time, the increase in combat efficiency measured by the number of successful sorties is only 30%. And even with the maximum load on all systems when the capacity increases to 220 sorties a day, the combat efficiency cannot be doubled. The Nimitz facilitates 120 sorties a day, which means the target number for Gerald Ford is 240. And that's not even theoretically possible. We want to know what you think about these third-generation ships. Do they justify the funds already spent, as well as future investments? Or perhaps the money could be spent more wisely? Comment below, and of course subscribe to our channel and enable notifications to not miss our new interesting videos.